the wait is finally over. While we have driven this Ineos Grenadier overseas previously, this is gonna be our first chance to drive it on Australian roads and off-road as well to see how this vehicle stacks up. This is a brand new four-wheel drive from a brand new car maker, Ineos. You might not have heard of them, but this is actually an old school four wheel drive. It really competes with things like a Toyota 70 series Land Cruiser, maybe even the old school Land Rover Defender and the new Land Rover Defender as well, because this isn't really what I would call a cheap four wheel drive, but it definitely is old school. Now we're gonna have a chance to drive this thing on road and off road, like I mentioned, and have a dig through the interior and see what it's like. Let's go and have a look at the new Ineos Grenadier. The Ineos Grenadier has been rolling out to first customers in the last couple of months in Australia, but it's already been at the receiving end of its second significant price rise. It's now starting from $109,000 plus on-road costs, and that's for the base two-seat utility wagon variant. Opting for five seats adds $1,000 to the asking price, while up-spec Fieldmaster and Trialmaster variants add 13 grand all up. So for a five seat trial master or field master, you're looking at $123,000 plus on-road costs. The major appeal of the Ineos Grenadier is its classic four wheel drive, driveline and chassis setup. There's live axles front and rear with coil springs and a full time four wheel drive system with a locking center diff and low range of course. Buyers can opt for either petrol or diesel power, both of which are BMW 3-litre six-cylinder units. These run through an 8-speed ZF automatic gearbox and there is no choice of manual. The diesel engine makes 183 kilowatts and 550 newton meters and has a claim of 10.5 litres of fuel consumed per 100 k's. While the petrol option makes 210 kilowatts and 450 newton meters, along with a claimed consumption level of 12.6 litres per 100 k's. Standard equipment includes a 12.3 inch infotainment display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, LED headlights, central locking, a turnkey start and good old fashioned manual handbrake and low range lever. Trialmaster does get the otherwise optional front and rear diff locks as standard fit, along with a raised air intake, rear access ladder, accessory belt and a 400 watt power takeoff. That's effectively a really high powered electrical outlet for accessories. Fieldmaster, on the other hand, adds in a few niceties like a safari roof, leather upholstery with heated front seats, carpeted floors, an upgraded sound system and 18-inch alloy wheels. There are some great details in this Grenadier for the four-wheel drive enthusiast beyond just that live front axle. There's a reasonably high mounted alternator under the bonnet and loads of power outlets and switches set up all around the place for things like accessories and modifications. There's also an auxiliary 12 volt battery system wired in under the rear seat, which is away from heat and weather, which is a good thing. This is the interior of the new Grenadier and it feels like its own vehicle. This isn't something that is borrowed or copied from anywhere else. And it does really feel like a ground up design, which I think is cool. It's all about big knobbly control knobs here. It's all very physical. There's no touch screen for things like climate controls. Everything looks like you could probably use it with a big meaty glove on your hand and you can kind of get to know where everything is as well. It's all clearly laid out and fairly basic, I think. You do have a big infotainment display here that actually includes a lot of your daily driving sort of thing. So your actual speed, your engine temperature, your fuel gauge, all takes up about one third of this display because in front of you, there actually isn't any instrument binnacle there. There's a small thing there for your warning lights, but you've actually got great visibility over the front there because this isn't built up as much as it would be in many other cars. But otherwise, I do like the build quality going on here in the vehicle. It feels well made and very sturdy overall. We've got two cup holders here, plus some storage in this central bin that is lockable. And you've also got your power outlets in there. So there's a 12 volt, a USB and a USB-C power outlet there. Also a good old fashioned manual handbrake and a stubby stick for your low range. How cool is that? I really felt like a vehicle like this might go with an electronic low range selector, but I love to see that there. That feels maybe a little bit plasticky and flimsy, and it does feel funny right next to this very modern BMW shifter right next to it, but it all works well. You pull up that collar to shift 
the center diff lock in and then down to low range as well very similar to an old defender but otherwise i think this grenadier is going to fit the bill for a lot of people especially when they turn their head up because there's a lot going on up here this is mostly to do with your off-road control so you've got diff locks up here you've got a lot of your auxiliary power outlet switching here and i think that is one big appeal to this car because it does a lot of things that no other new vehicle does. People will buy a four-wheel drive and take it to the shop and spend all this money fitting all of this kind of equipment. This has its standard, so include that into the value for money equations, I suppose. Even though this vehicle does feel expensive, it does have a few cool things going on. While we didn't get a chance to film the second row and load space of the Grenadier this time around, we can say that the back seats are decently comfortable and spacious. There are air vents and power outlets here, along with good forward visibility from the raised seating position. The boot is quite reminiscent of an old Defender in terms of size and shape. 1,100 litres of boot space is a huge number and sounds impressive, but this space is mostly vertical, so you will need to stack things up high to use all of it. In the near future, we are really looking forward to testing out this Grenadier as a touring four-wheel drive and loading it up more thoroughly with gear to see how it handles. Curb weight of the Grenadier varies between 2,644 kilos and 2,740 kilos depending on your specification. And that hints towards the heavy duty or perhaps over-engineered nature of this Grenadier. There's a GVM of 3,550 kilos, so that means your payload varies between 810 and 906 kilos, once again depending on spec. There's a 3.5 ton brake to towing capacity and a generous 7 ton gross combination mass, and that is good news if you're looking to tow a heavy load, but also carry some gear at the same time. We also did some on-road driving with the Grenadier and we did find it to be a typically old school and analog driving experience that you don't really get these days in many other places. Steering is slow and the vehicle is heavy, but I think those of us who are well versed in this kind of vehicle will probably enjoy the experience. Please give us a like for this video and I've got to say apologies for the upcoming drop in audio quality in this driving piece to camera, but please bear with us. From a personal point of view, the Ineos Grenadier is one car that I've been really excited for in Australia. I'm one of those guys who likes old-fashioned four-wheel drives, I guess. I like Land Rovers, old Land Rovers, I like Land Cruisers and that sort of thing. And this Grenadier is its interesting because it's kind of like an endangered species coming back from the dead in a way. A vehicle with a live front axle along with a live rear axle and a real focus put on durability, capability and payloads and that sort of thing. It's, it's just something that we haven't seen for a long time. So for a brand new car maker to sort of just lob in and produce the car, it is exciting. And what's good news is that initial drive impressions of this car are good as well. We've been doing a lot of dirt road touring around today, just cruising around on dirt tracks. Nothing terribly challenging, to be honest with you, in terms of outright capability testing but what i do like from what i've seen so far is the suspension it does feel nicely dialed for the kind of driving that people will want to do in their grenadier it absorbs bigger bumps quite well it feels well controlled but not overly controlled at the same time it funnily enough it feels like an old school four-wheel drive with a really quality aftermarket suspension system fitted steering is definitely in the old school realm of things it's probably not as slow and vague as a 7 Street Land Cruiser, for example, but it definitely sits more on that side of things. So if you're gonna go jump out of a BMW M3 and then jump into this thing, might be a bit of a rude shock, but if you're used to the kind of vehicle that Grenadier is, it's fine. It's a live axle, it's got a recirculating ball, hydraulic system set up, but it's not fed by the engine. It's actually electrically power assisted, which is a little bit different and unique for the setup, which is kind of cool. I have noticed that at low speeds, it sometimes can feel a little bit heavy. So you do have to get your arms into it a little bit. And don't forget this turning circle is massive as well. It doesn't really affect you about the bush, but if you're gonna be daily driving this thing, and battling through the suburbs from day to day, you will notice that turning circle quite a bit. But otherwise, we've got three litre BMW petrol and diesel engines. They're both fantastic. Choose your poison in that regard, I think. 
the diesel does rumble a little bit more and has a slightly better delivery of torque down low and surprise surprise the petrol has a bit more of a charming revving nature to it to get moving so choose whichever one you prefer there i suppose but it's made it to a nice zf eight speed automatic gearbox full-time four-wheel drive system locking center diff all traditional old school and i've got to say proven four-wheel drive ingredients and that really underpins the appeal of this grenadier overall ergonomically speaking the grenadier is nice to drive the four wheel does take getting used to i think you've got this gigantic footrest where a clutch pedal might be if this was a manual but it takes up almost the entire footwell there and your legs do feel quite upright in the footwell but i know i'm getting used to it i think it does look a bit strange and it feels a bit interesting to first get used to um, i haven't driven this thing for hours on end yet so i can't really comment from that point of view but hey maybe it's not too bad overall these seats are comfortable we've got decent adjustment available there's good visibility it does feel similar to a defender or a land cruiser 70 series in terms of having a high driving position and also good visibility over the front but we've got tilt and reach adjustment through the steering column so economically speaking there's no issue really and it's quite comfortable and quiet to drive as well the powertrains are smooth it feels enjoyable to drive i think in the way that a four-wheel drive can be it's it's engaging you can feel what's going on below you and I, I do like that but this all does unfortunately come at quite a big price and I feel like if there's going to be one big negative of this Grenadier it's just that it does cost a significant amount of money so if you are looking at this vehicle $120,000, dollars you're going to have to weigh it up against something like a new Land Rover Defender which well it doesn't have live axles it doesn't have that same intent focus on mechanical simplicity but it's a really really nice car very capable as well so you've got to weigh that up you have to think about 300 series land cruiser Nissan patrol there's a whole bunch of vehicles 70 series land cruiser that do kind of compete with this grenadier they don't offer the same thing but it is similar and generally speaking they all offer better value for money than this vehicle initially and another thing to talk about with this Grenadier is weight. It's a pretty heavy vehicle. You're looking at around 2.7 tons unladen for the diesel and a little bit less for the petrol. No small amount of weight. And while you do have 3.55 tons of GVM, you have a decent payload there. This is a heavy vehicle and you've got to just keep your eye on that, I think. It doesn't feel like it drives too heavy, to be honest with you. But it's definitely a lot heavier than some other vehicles out there so just something to keep in mind on one hand i'm so glad that a vehicle like this grenadier exists it does so many things that enthusiast four-wheel drives really love in terms of the mechanicals in terms of the drive line and the real focus on simplicity and durability this car will deliver where a lot of people have been left wanting for a long time the powertrains are great, there's a lot of off-road capability on offer, and if you want to accessorize, there's plenty of scope for that as well. But unfortunately, it comes at a price, and it is a fairly massive one. If Ineos were able to keep a lid on that price a little bit more, I think this car would balance out more nicely for a lot of Australian buyers. But now, we're well north of six figures. This is a fairly big asking price for a specialist bit of equipment as it is. So if you want it, I get it, I want one as well, but you're just gonna to have to be willing to pony up a big chunk of cash.